speaking of the, the Warriors, too, uh, Steve Kerr went on Draymond Green's podcast and, and broke down game one of the or game one and game two of the Miami Heat uh, Denver series. Um, and he gave a quick about a minute soundbite where he praised the Heat's role players. And it seemed like he was specifically talking about guys like Duncan Robinson, who, again, had fallen out of the rotation, um, had every reason at that point to really check out but committed stayed locked in and now that his number's being called again is playing huge minutes for them in the NBA finals like he was um you know in the bubble and when he got that 90 million dollar contract at the same time taking a dig at the young guys on the Warriors roster saying that you know the team that they had this year they didn't have those type of guys guys that were committed and bought in didn't care about their minutes. You know, they just, you know, were team first. He felt like that was lacking out of their young guys this year. And that sounds like a pretty specific dig at guys like Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga and maybe Moses Moody as well. So Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know what your thoughts are on, as a coach going out and saying that publicly, like, I get that it can come off as like you're challenging your players, but to me, it seems a little off base and I'm professional to an extent to do that on a podcast with a vet on the team who ain't exactly the, the most disciplined off court with said young guys. So exactly. So, um, yeah, I just want to know what your, your thoughts are on that. Cause that really was interesting to me. It rubbed me the wrong way. I think that, what he's saying can be looked at as bad for the organization as well. Because what are some what is one of the main reasons why a lot of these players on the heat, these role players are always locked in. They play they're always connected. They're all they're such a, a good team as far as chemistry, as far as all having one goal. It's because of the heat organization. It's because of the heat culture. It's because of Spo. It's because of Pat Riley, all of them. They build that culture. They preach that to all these guys. So you could say isn't that kind of your fault? Isn't that kind of the Warriors organization's fault as to why these guys aren't locked in, as to why these guys don't have just one goal, and that's winning, and that's winning a championship rather than your minutes or who's getting paid and who's not getting paid? So I feel like it could be looked at as, like, bad for the organization, even bad on Kerr himself for ha- not having the guys focus on one goal. Now, I understand that, like, all players are different. Like, Duncan Robinson's undrafted. A lot of these guys are undrafted on the Heat. So it's like they do have a, a different type of, like, uh, I want to say like grind to them basically because like they mm-hmm. had to work to to get to where they're at right now. A guy like Kaminga, he was a lottery pick. It's like so I can see why he might be a little spoiled as to like, oh, I feel like I should be playing the way I like as high I was as I was drafted. I should be playing. So like the person can be different, but I feel like the culture sets the tone. Your best player also sets the tone. Like Jimmy Butler is the best player. He has all these guys as focused as locked in and focused on one goal as he is. So. It could be looked at as bad on uh, for the player, but also for the organization and for the coaching staff and for that whole just culture they have in Golden State. We talked about this a few episodes ago after the Warriors were eliminated, that we both felt like their young talent was not developed properly. They were not utilized properly. And when we got to the stage, they weren't ready. Mm-hmm. So to your point, a lot of that blame for – what Kerr is talking about here, their, you know, their attitude, um, their approach to it, how they're taking, you know, their lack of minutes. That is hard. Like a lot of that blame has to go to you Mm -hmm. Um, because there's a whole lot of time in the regular season to get these guys more opportunity, get them confidence, bought in all of that. And you're teetering that line kind of, similarly in a way to what Portland has been doing, where you're trying to be in a win now mode. Your Steph is playing some of the best basketball, if not the best basketball of his career. But we also have these young guys on the roster. We got Jordan Poole. We got Moses Moody. We got Kaminga. We had Wiseman. How do we win now and get these guys ready to be the future? I would say personally, I think that they are failing at doing that right now um, mm-hmm. in the sense that, Obviously, yes, they won the championship last year. So, And they're still in a place to continue to contend in the West. But you've already had to trade Wiseman because 
that didn't work. Kaminga, what does his role look like moving forward? He may potentially have to get traded. I think Moses Moody has had spurts this postseason where he looked really well. Jordan Poole, I'd say, regressed from last year. His role looks very uncertain. He looked unplayable for a lot of the playoffs. So your future is getting mortgaged right now when you had the, you had opportunities to try to integrate these two and let these guys kind of start out and become role players in the system and grow and develop to be larger pieces of the system. When you start to phase out Curry and Clay and Draymond, you could have the seamless like changing of the guard. Obviously that's easier said than done, but that was clearly their mindset going in. And I, I would say they just have not, been effective at doing that um and like i said it's already cost them one of their core pieces and young talent now james wiseman goes out in detroit <clears throat> obviously <clears throat> coming out of memphis you know played what one game in college or didn't play in college at all like he's a very raw prospect they knew that going mm-hmm. in um but if he's able to develop in detroit or if he moves and is just continue able to develop and get minutes and turns into a very quality NBA player, that would be looked at as something like, dang, if you could have only have kept him, right? Exactly. Um, so they've got to find ways to utilize these young pieces to get them bought in, get them minutes, and get them developing. Because Curry's only getting older. Clay's only getting only, older. Draymond's getting older. Iguodala is retired the pieces of this dynasty are going to have to bow out shortly, Mm -hmm. right? Like they can't stick around forever. Mm -hmm. Um, So if they're not really seriously valuing this young talent that they have, they're going to be setting themselves up for a much larger rebuild than it should have been based on, you know, having that one really bad season, you look out and get the number two overall pick. You still get lottery picks with Kaminga in the following year. And it's like, you're kind of squandering it mm-hmm. when that was like at the time was viewed as like, bro, this team still has Steph Clay and Draymond and had a number two pick. They're going to have two dynasties. That's what like, that's what people were saying. Like, right. They were like, he's going to last forever. Exactly. And that has not come to fruition. So yeah, I, I, it just, I didn't, I don't like it from a, from a professionalism standpoint, like that's not a conversation I feel like you have on a podcast. I understand that Draymond is all about, you know, peeling back that curtain and just like being upfront and honest about stuff, but not there. Right. Like not, especially not with young guys, right. Like who your whole thing is about their attitude. That's not going to help the situation. If anything, you're only making it worse. They should have um, talked about how Jimmy Butler doesn't punch his role players in the face as well. They should also talk about that. <laughs> so, I mean. Do you think that had an impact? Because that's all come back up now after this, right? Yes. Do you think that that had an impact on Jordan Poole's play or just the Warriors' play as a whole? Yes, because one, they admitted it. They admitted that that had an effect on the whole team. Two, because if I am a young guy and I look up to this one player, not look up to like an idol, but like you're you're the leader. He's of the a team. vet, right? You're yeah. a vet. You're a leader of the team. You're the voice of this team. Mm-hmm. And you punch me in the face. Anything you say after that is irrelevant. You and you embarrass me. It's not like you punch me in the face. Like we can fight. You know what I mean? We can teams fight all the time. Right. Behind closed doors. Like teams fight all the time. But if you punch me in the face, it gets out. I'm publicly embarrassed. Like that's gonna have an effect on my play. That's gonna have an effect on what if I'm gonna even listen to you moving forward. That's gonna have an effect on the whole team as a whole, the team chemistry. Like yes, that matters, and that that that's part of the reason why they had this up and down year and eventually lost in the playoffs. So I 100% think that that had an effect on Jordan Poole's play specifically and just how the whole team played as a whole. Because and Draymond can't be the same leader. If he's out here punching people in the face, it's like you cannot be that same guy that's supposed to rally the troops and get these guys going when you're looked at as like, I don't know, this guy, not a bully, but like, you know what I mean? It's, you're just, you don't have the same voice in that locker room after doing something like that. Yeah. And I think the Warriors made it worse by not suspending him, right? Because then it, on yeah, you don't get of, punished for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. On top of all that embarrassment, it felt like the organization was just like, pat on the hand, figure it out, you know, don't mm-hmm. do that again type of thing. As Jordan Poole, that would feel like a slap in the face to me. It's like, bro, 
again, it's one thing for it to happen behind closed doors. Whoever let the video get out, like that's a whole separate situation that needs to be dealt with. But at the end of the day, it's out. People see it. It's a bad, you know, it's bad optics for the organization. Mm-hmm. And it's even worse optics that it gets out and nothing is done about it. And they just like, it kind of gets swept under the rug and the season starts and it's just like never really touched on. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't like it from Steve Kerr. I didn't like it from Draymond. Um, just a, an interesting situation though. They continue again, like we've said so many times, their off season is going to be one of the most, I think, to, to keep up with and watch with all the, the change in the front office. Um, now this kind of, you know, internal stuff going on there um, with the young guys. So I'm interested to see, I've seen people be, I think really critical of Steve Kerr lately. Um, and some of it is definitely deserved. Like they think that he has gotten more credit for his coaching successes than he really deserves. And they think some of his philosophies are outdated. They think his biggest adjustment at times sometimes is say, well, dang, we'll just put Draymond at the five and go small. <laughs> and they're like, hey, small ball can't save every situation, you know? Uh, I think some of it is warranted, but um, this, I think, will genuinely be his biggest test, like this upcoming season, dealing with all of these internal issues, dealing with front office changes, and handling how this aging dynasty plays out into what the next generation of the Warriors look like. Um, Because if you can get that right, you're setting your organization up for long-term success. If Mm -hmm. not, it's going to be bleak years ahead for the Warriors because you just go into a full-on rebuild that happens to a lot of great teams, but you had a unique opportunity to kind of extend that and sustain it longer. Yeah, I, I can't speak on the development part of the young players as far as him not doing his job. I feel like I, I agree with that. They're not doing a good job developing those young guys. But as far as, like, his scheme and everything being outdated, I feel like the players themselves are outdated. I feel like they're playing as if they're the same prime Draymond, prime Klay Thompson. Curry is playing like he's in his prime. That's him, him aside. But they're just – they don't have – we talked about it in, when they lost to the Lakers. It wasn't necessarily that Darvin Ham out coached him. It was the fact that the Lakers just had the proper players to make those adjustments, to make those lineup changes, and the Warriors just didn't. Like we said, Poole is was unplayable. They didn't. The Kaminga wasn't ready. Like Moses Moody, he played a little bit, but he he's not like a huge impact player. It's like they just don't have the roster to make those type of changes that should have been made. But that goes back to the organization not developing the young guys to say they do a better job of that. Then maybe they do have a Kaminga that they can just plug in and give them like valuable minutes. So, I mean, yeah, the line, the roster is, is outdated, but part of it is their problem for, or is their fault for not developing the young guys. Yeah. hundred percent. 